Time to pull up a chair. We've got another great story for you today in the R Lounge. Some disasters you just don't invite in. Today in the R Lounge, let's slam the door on chaos. Ex-mother-in-law ruined my marriage. Her new daughter-in-law cut her off. Now she wants my help. I shut the door on her. I'm not sure if this would get approved by the mod. It isn't an am I the a-hole kind of thing. I just want to share the experience I had with my ex-mother-in-law and how things turned out for me. It all started over a decade ago. So I was married to this man for three years. Let's call him Dan. I was 23 then and he was 25. We were dating for two and a half years when I unexpectedly conceived. We both freaked out, but then we were in love and we decided to take the plunge into marriage. Looking back, I can see how rushed and precarious the decision was, but at the time, we were young and optimistic. It was actually Dan's idea to get married as his mother was a religious woman and wouldn't be pleased to have a grandchild out of wedlock. I wanted to have the baby whether with or without the marriage. So, when he proposed to me, it looked like a perfect plan. We decided to get married a week after we found out about the pregnancy because, you know, cover it up before it pops out. I was a mess. Everything was happening so fast. Breaking the news to the parents, wedding preparations, and doctor's appointments. Until then, I hadn't met his mother, Jane. Dan had mentioned her a few times during our relationship, but she lived a few states away and circumstances just never aligned for us to meet. Knowing about her religious knack, I was worried about her reaction to our situation. However, Dan insisted she would be fine with the situation, but I had my doubts. When I finally met her the day before our wedding, I instantly knew things were not going to be as smooth as Dan had assured me. The moment she stepped through the door, I felt a wave of negativity spread across the house. You know those vibes you get when the wrong person comes near you? Her disapproval radiated off her like a foul smell. Initially, I assumed it was because of the circumstances. Her son marrying a woman he'd knocked up. I understood that, in her eyes, the situation wasn't ideal. After all, she claimed to be a devoutly religious woman, someone who believed in doing things the right way. Dan was her only son. His father died when he was 11, and since then, she has been a single parent to Dan. She didn't get married because she wanted to give Dan her undivided love and attention. Quite exemplary, isn't it? I felt the same. However, gradually, I started to realize it was toxic. Anything in excess is harmful, and so is love. On the wedding day, her face was grim. Even my parents weren't thrilled with the setup, yet they were happy that I was starting a new chapter of my life. But Jane, oh my god, she barely spoke to me, only curt nods and disapproving glances. When she spoke, it was to Dan, and her voice was laced with irritation. I overheard snippets of their conversations. Most of it was her complaining about how messy everything was and how she was worried about the consequences of such a rushed marriage. What should have been a joyous day turned into a stressful one. I was constantly on edge, trying to ignore the passive-aggressive comments and icy looks from my new mother-in-law. Dan noticed my discomfort, but kept brushing it off. He reassured Jane would come around once she got to know me better, but she never did. After the wedding, she became a regular presence in our lives and at our house. Initially, it didn't feel so much intrusive, and I thought she genuinely wanted to be lending a hand. She helped us set up the place for us, the house and the nursery. According to Dan, his father hadn't left her with much financially, so she was heavily dependent on Dan for support. This dependence wasn't just financial, it was emotional too. Dan was her only child, and she clung to him as though he was her lifeline. I tried to empathize, but it quickly became clear that Jane wasn't just a single mother who needed support, but she was a controlling woman who didn't know how to let go. She was outrageous and intrusive. She had an opinion about everything. From the way we decorated our home to how we spent our weekends, nothing was off limits for her criticism. If we bought something new for the house, she'd question why we needed it. If we went out for dinner, she'd comment on how we were wasting money. Every decision we made was scrutinized and judged by Jane. It was just so unbearable. But the worst part was how she treated my daughter. From the moment she was born, Jane was distant. She barely showed any affection towards her, which baffled me. I assumed she'd be over the moon to have a grandchild, but instead, she seemed almost resentful. It felt like she blamed her for our hasty marriage. She couldn't bear Dan's attention on me or our daughter. She wanted undivided attention from Dan. I was too young and naive to stand up to her. Everything was just too messed up. We had just started our career. Our salary was also not great, just enough to make the ends meet. Additionally, Dan had the responsibility of his mother. We couldn't afford a nanny, so Dan would usually ask Jane to babysit our daughter. She wasn't happy about the idea, but how could she say no to her man baby? However, most of the time, I would come home to see my baby crying while she was peacefully knitting in the living room. When I asked why she left the crying baby unattended, 
She said the baby needs to toughen up, and she was trying to teach her self-soothing mechanism. Once my baby had spit up, and she was rolling on her vomit for God knows how long, and this woman didn't even bother to check why she was crying. Since then, I stopped having her around. She'd criticize the way I was raising her. She would say to Dan that I was spoiling the baby too much. She hated me and my baby. She never said anything outright, but her actions spoke volumes. The most hurtful thing, though, was when I overheard her talking to someone on the phone. She said, I love Dan, but that child, she's just too much like her mother. She's going to be trouble. I confronted Dan about it, and he said, maybe I heard it in the wrong context, and I should have known the complete context before jumping to a conclusion. A year flew, and by the time my daughter was one, my resentment towards Jane reached its peak. It felt like I was constantly walking on eggshells in my own home, not to mention the postpartum anxiety, setbacks in career, and so on. Dan, unfortunately, was of no help. He was caught in the middle and refused to take sides. Anytime I brought up the issue, he'd tell me I was overreacting or that I needed to be more patient with his mother. Worse, he would brush it off as my postpartum anxiety. He said he had a lot to deal with other than indulging in this catfight. He didn't understand the toll it was taking on me and our marriage. The final straw came when my daughter was little over a year old. We were at Jane's house for her birthday celebration, and as usual, she was in a foul mood. She spent the entire evening criticizing everything we did for her, the cake we bought for her, the gifts we got her, and so on. But the breaking point came when my daughter accidentally knocked over a cup of juice. While sipping the juice, she playfully spilled it over. It was simple fun, which every baby does in those years. But Jane's reaction was anything but simple. She screamed at my daughter, calling her clumsy and careless. My baby burst into tears. Dan was standing there, but Jane didn't let him intervene. That witch was worried about her carpet being stained, and that son of a witch stood there leaving my baby crying. I was across the hallway. As soon as I heard the chaos, I rushed to pick her up and comfort her. Jane looked at Dan and said, See, this is what I tell you. She doesn't discipline the child and doesn't let others do so. I bet this child is going to give you a tough time as she grows up. I remember standing up, shaking with anger, and telling Jane that she had no right to raise her voice to my daughter. I told her that if she couldn't treat my daughter with the love and respect she deserved, then she had no place in our lives. Dan, instead of supporting me, tried to downplay the situation, telling me to calm down and that Jane didn't mean what she said. But I had reached my limit and told him that I was done putting up with a simp man who's yet to outgrow from his mother's lap. The son of a witch and the witch herself took offense at my words, but it didn't deter me from walking out, not just from her house, but from our marriage. I came home and started packing my stuff. Dan entered the house in a foul mood, wanting to pick up the remaining fight, but he saw me packing. He lost his crap. I don't know why he was surprised. What else did he expect me to do? Stand there and take the crap from the mother-son toxic duo? He said I shouldn't make any impulsive decisions as our daughter's well-being was at stake. I screamed at him that now he was worried about our daughter? What happened to him when his mother was berating our daughter for such a silly thing? Now he was in tears, sobbing that I was intending to separate him from his daughter. He started apologizing and said he would set boundaries with his mom, but I was like, I don't want boundaries anymore. I want you to choose one. Either Jane goes or we do. I couldn't let my daughter grow up in an environment where she was constantly belittled by her own grandmother. Dan, true to form, tried to remain neutral. He said he loved both of us and couldn't choose between his mother and his wife, but I had already made my decision. I moved out that very night, leaving him in his crying act. The divorce was quick, and to be honest, it was a relief. I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Dan and I had grown apart after our marriage, and Jane had driven a wedge between us that couldn't be repaired. I took my daughter and moved to a smaller house across town. Dan paid child support, but I had to put in extra hours to fend for both of us. It wasn't easy starting over, but it was necessary. Jane, of course, moved in with Dan after the divorce to take care of him. She was looking for an opportunity to take her man-child into her arms, and divorce gave her a big chance to pick him up. I couldn't care less about him. I moved on with my life. The first few months were tough. I missed the good times I had with Dan, but the bitterness I faced in our marriage pushed me to move on faster. I got the full custody of my daughter and Dan got two hours of supervised visits every week. After she turned three, Dan got one day a week. I had to face Dan for my daughter's sake, but it was just a formal greeting. I had set ground rules that Jane would not come close to my daughter and thankfully, Dan respected it. He never tried to enforce a relationship between Jane and our daughter. It was seven years since our divorce. My daughter is a little over eight now. I've been seeing someone for two years and it's been great, touch wood. My daughter is quite fond of him. Dan, however, was single until now. In fact, he was quite shocked when he got to know about my boyfriend. He asked me how could I move on so fast. I took five years to move on, like come on. 
I don't know what happened to him after that, he started living alone and asked his mother to move out. Recently, he started dating again and last month he got married. I didn't know much about his new wife except for the occasional details my daughter would share after visiting her dad. From what I heard, she is kind and loving and my daughter seemed to like her, which was all I really cared about. A while ago, my daughter was telling me that during her last visit, Jane dropped by and wanted to hug her, but Dan's wife didn't allow Jane to come near her. She also kind of gave the cold shoulder to Jane and told her this, Jane, I would appreciate you call us before showing up randomly. If there's something urgent business, you can meet Dan at his office. Jane left immediately. I wonder if the same cycle is going to get repeated and there's another divorce coming up for Dan. I hope this time he learns his lesson and lets go of his mother. Your ex-mother-in-law sounds like the queen of passive aggression and Dan was obviously the heir to the throne. The fact that he thought you were overreacting just shows how deep in the mommy knows best mindset he was. I guess Dan's new wife is learning the hard way that once you've been in Jane's orbit, there's no escaping the gravitational pull of her drama. In the end, you escaped the circus, and it looks like the show must go on without you. Keep enjoying your well-deserved peace and the fact that your daughter's growing up in a healthier environment. And if Dan ever wonders why you moved on so quickly, just remind him that some of us prefer to live in the present, not in the shadow of mommy's apron strings. Update 1 I didn't expect so many people would read and comment on this. Thanks to all of you. I don't have a lot to update, but people were asking for it. So here we go. For the first few months of their marriage, things seemed to be going well for Dan and his wife. Even my daughter had a good time with them. She even went on a vacation with them. I was apprehensive about sending her, but his wife assured me she would take care of her, so I eased up. I'm particularly not tight with his new wife, but I have met her a few times when I went to pick up my daughter and she told me about Jane's interference. Jane started her old tricks of dropping by and meddling in Dan's life. Apparently, Jane had moved in with Dan a while ago because she's unwell and cannot live alone. I wasn't surprised. Jane had always relied on Dan, and I knew she wouldn't be able to swallow the fact that her boy was happy with his wife. It's only been a few months, and their marriage was already starting to deteriorate. My daughter told me that since Grandma's moved in, Dan and his wife have been arguing over everything from the way the house was run to how Dan's money was spent and the atmosphere of the house has turned murky. His wife protested against it, but Dan had requested her to put up with his mother for some time until he figured out a permanent solution. Before he married, when he asked Jane to move out, I was hopeful that he finally is able to see through Jane's toxic love and come out of it. But no, I was wrong. He still is a mama's boy who refuses to outgrow from her lap. He ruined our marriage from his mother, and now he's ready to risk his second one also. God, there are some people who never learn from their mistakes. It was deja vu. Everything that happened in my marriage was happening again. Only this time, Dan's wife was the one dealing with Jane's toxic behavior. I feel somewhat sympathetic towards her, knowing all too well the hell she was living through. But it also gave me a sense of validation. It wasn't just me, Jane was the problem. For the last two weeks, my daughter refused to visit Dan, and when he asked, she told him straight that she didn't want to go there because they were fighting and arguing, and she also doesn't like her grandma. Dan promised to take her outside on their next visit and wouldn't meet at his house. I hope Dan learns his lesson soon and asks fast if he doesn't want to be divorced a second time. His daughter might also resent him for his toxic attachment to his mother, only if he sees it this way. I guess there's some cosmic justice in the, all of this. While Dan's second wife deals with the same nightmare you once endured, you're out here enjoying some well-deserved peace and quiet. It's like the universe's way of saying, see, you weren't the problem. You were just ahead of your time. Update 2. Sorry for not updating enough. There wasn't much to write, but this one's interesting. I got an unexpected visitor yesterday. Ex-mother-in-law. As I mentioned in the last post, Jane moved in with Dan, claiming she was unwell and couldn't live alone. This obviously troubled his marriage, and things went downhill, but gladly Dan saved it just at the right time. After four months, Dan finally realized his mother was the problem and asked her to leave but she kept stalling asking for some time to put her crap together until Dan's wife had it enough and kicked her out of the house. One day, Jane went out to meet her friends, and when she came back, she found her stuff lying outside. She knocked on the door, but Dan's wife didn't open it and screamed at her to leave. Jane called up Dan and told him about this. He said this time he has to stand by his wife's side. Well, good for him that he finally came to his senses. This was one thing, but what happened after that shocked me the most. Jane was not only kicked out of the house, but also banned from their life, Jane was also cut off financially and left to fend for herself. She being a single mother and Dan being her only child, she had no one else to turn to. Also, she was not on good terms with any of her relatives. 
I had never known any of Dan's relatives while being married to him. I heard the news with a pinch of salt, and then yesterday, bam, she appeared. I hadn't seen or heard from Jane since the divorce, so you can imagine my surprise when she showed up on my door. It was so snowy outside. I was home alone. My daughter was at a friend's house for play date. Jane was standing there looking like a drowned rat. For a moment, I was speechless. I hadn't expected to see her ever again, let alone at my door. But as soon as the shock wore off, anger took over. I was like, how dare she come here, to my home, after everything she had put me through? Before I could say anything, she started sobbing in desperation. She told me about how Dan and his wife had kicked her out, and she had nowhere else to go. Yes, she has a house, but it is falling apart without proper maintenance. She pleaded with me, saying she had no one else to turn to, and that she was sorry for everything that had happened between us. But her apology meant nothing to me. I could see right through her. She wasn't sorry for what she had done. She was sorry for the situation she was in now. She wasn't here because she had changed or because she genuinely wanted to make amends. She was here because she had run out of options. She wanted money to pay her bills and she cannot survive just with the pension money. I felt nothing but contempt. This was the woman who had ruined my marriage, who had made my life a living hell for years, who had treated my daughter like unwanted. And now she had the nerve to ask for my help? I didn't yell, I didn't scream, but I didn't even let her into my house. I simply looked her in the eye and asked her to leave. She started pleading that I was her last hope and stuff. I said, roll your butt and get a job instead of piling it up on others. She stood there for a moment, staring at me in disbelief, at my language. Before she said anything further, I slammed the door in her face. I didn't feel anything at all. After that day, Jane tried to contact me a few more times. She called, left messages, even sent a letter, apologizing and saying that karma came biting at her. But I ignored them all. I don't owe her any response. Later, I got to know from Dan's wife that Jane eventually moved to a small apartment in a senior living community, and from what I understand, Dan has finally started to see his mother for who she really is. As for me, I have moved on long back. I'm focusing on raising my daughter and building a happy and stable life for us. Like I said, I've started dating again, and while I'm not rushing into anything, I'm hopeful about the future. Life does come to a full circle, doesn't it? Life does come full circle, and sometimes... It brings a cold, snowy reminder that what goes around definitely comes around. What do you make of this? Thank you for joining us today in the R Lounge. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you soon. And put your chair back where you found it.